Good evening and thanks for joining us. We begin with breaking news tonight with fallout from the devastating wildfires that ripped through the Shuswap region. Locals continue to butt heads with authorities after police ramped up enforcement to keep people out of evacuation zones. The BC Wildfire Service also posted to social media about the incident but quickly deleted those posts. Police have set up roadblocks equipped with spike belts calling it a matter of safety and compliance with BC Wildfire's plan. But tonight, locals organized a convoy called Truth and Freedom, hoping to have a peaceful conversation with checkpoint officers on Highway 1. They say blocking the roadway is unlawful, and they only want to deliver supplies to people that need it. One man we spoke to earlier today said he drove hours on logging roads to bypass authorities, all to help save his community from burning to the ground. I don't understand why it's such a big deal. Um, I have a class one. I'm a mechanic. I know how to do all this stuff. I can help. And I cannot just sit around and watch my friend's houses burn. Oh, they absolutely save some homes. And then when, they're home, when their home's not in risk anymore, they're driving around the block saving the next neighbor's home. BC's Minister of Emergency Management says while their heart may be in the right place, they are potentially getting in the way of BC wildfire crews if they need to do backburns and air attacks. Also tonight, BC wildfire posted online that crews would be leaving the North Shoe Swap area, adding the environment was unsafe for crews. The post was then deleted. We reached out to BC wildfire to see if crews are still in that area. We did not hear back before air time. And earlier today, BC Wildfire said the Shoe Swap Wildfire is now the number one priority for resources. Penny Daflos has more from Sam and Arm. But what a difference 48 hours can make. It's not just cooler right now. An overnight downpour has really helped with the smoke and really improved visibility. And that means not just a resumption of aerial firefighting activities, but also figuring out exactly where the leading edges of this fire really are. A series of downpours overnight have helped, as have the temperatures. A thick blanket of smoke had really hampered the firefight. But now there's several kilometers of visibility, which means BC wildfire will be able to map exactly how far the fire has spread. Broadly, we're seeing a reduction in fire behavior, uh, except for some areas which are still um, proving challenging along the existing perimeter. The wildfire branch says the shoe swap is now a top priority and they have three more helicopters for a total of 17, as well as other resources to fight the Adams complex, which saw such explosive growth last week. It'll go down in history as one of the fastest growing fires BC has ever seen. The perception here is that this rural area is a far lower priority than Kelowna, despite widespread destruction and loss of homes. I'm very grateful to have a place to call home when there is no home. Locals are now helping locals like this couple taking in evacuees who've lost their home. I think it's imperative. We have to come together as a community because we're stronger together. That's how we get through this. In communities under evacuation alert, key infrastructure like city halls and hospitals are still covered in sprinklers. The concern's still very real, even though the Adams complex hasn't seen significant growth in about 48 hours. This weather is exactly what fire crews have needed to be able to try to gain the upper hand on this fire, but the conditions won't continue. High temperatures are expected again for this weekend, and there's still a lot of summer yet to go. Penny Daflos, CTV News, Salmon Arm. More West Kelowna residents were able to return home this evening as more evacuation zones ease around the McDougal Creek wildfire. For those still not allowed back, people now have a way of checking the status of their home through a new web page. Abigail Turner reports. It was hard because I had to leave everything be behind. <laughs> Devastating, emotional days for homeowners faced with rushing out the door, unsure if they'd ever return. For Bill Jack, he was one of many who discovered he would never walk through his front door of 10 years ever again. They had it on TV showing our location totally destroyed. So it was, it was heartbreaking for the people that I was with. Left with nothing but his passport and the clothes on his back, it's a traumatic reality for many homeowners finding out they're left with nothing. Today we live in a day where social media and we have photos and information that is flying around faster than we can even begin to think we can manage. 
A website is being set up for homeowners to enter their addresses. Our preference without question would be to personally call every single homeowner and be with them when they receive what is probably the worst news they have ever received. But patience is wearing thin for some who are waiting to return. I'm hoping we get in before the weekend so that she has a chance to at least have one week before school starts. As smoky skies clear and some evacuation orders still remain. We're holding people back because we're still firefighting in the neighborhood. There's hoses and pumps. I can't have you operating around that. Inside this evacuation center in West Kelowna, there's a long wait for people to apply for benefits. It's been an emotional roller coaster. It's flames erupting again right above our house and it's a little bit scary. It's been a lot, yeah. Officials have provided updated numbers and say that 180 properties have been damaged or completely destroyed, the majority being in West Kelowna or along Okanagan Lake. But keep in mind, multiple properties could contain multiple units, which means there could be hundreds of people left homeless in this community. Abigail Turner, CTV News, Kelowna. Heartbreaking news in the Nahatlatch Valley north of Boston Bar. A family business that's been operating for 40 years has been destroyed by the Kukipi Creek wildfire. The Rio Rafting and Yoga Resort posted these devastating before and after photos on their Instagram page. Their bus completely charred, their cabins and equipment reduced to rubble. Unfortunately, due to the nature of their business and the resort's location, they say they haven't been able to get insurance for forest fires for several years. A GoFundMe has been set up for the family. The Kukipi Creek wildfire is now estimated at over 14,000 hectares. The wildfire prompted the closure of Highway 1 between Lytton and Boston Bar last week. Hundreds of properties in the Fraser Canyon and thompson Nicola regions remain on evacuation orders and alerts. Crews are no longer planning ignitions at the Rossmore Lake fire as recent rainfall has helped. The the wildfire is burning at 7,800 hectares, about 10 kilometers from Kamloops. BC Wildfire says there are currently 39 pieces of heavy equipment working on this fire. Structure protection crews are also in place. BC's emergency response centers appear to be buckling under the weight of nearly 30,000 evacuees seeking shelter from wildfires. As Rob Buffham reports, now a team of volunteers is helping lighten that burden by creating a virtual reception center on Vancouver Island. Volunteers at the Saanich Emergency Center are helping evacuees hundreds of kilometers away, forced from their homes by wildfires in the Okanagan. It feels really good actually. I have a family member who was evacuated in Kelowna and so this makes it even more personal and meaningful for me. They've created a virtual reception center, one of several around BC, set up to lighten the load and long lines at physical reception centers in Kelowna. Folks here calling a list of hundreds of evacuees, checking in and providing them e-transfers or coupons for accommodation, food or clothing. One last person at the reception center to kind of fill up those lines and we can contact them directly from their hotel room from wherever they are. Wildfires have sparked nearly 30,000 evacuations across BC and many people have endured big waits to get emergency help. These are some of the most stressful moments of a people's life and having to wait at reception centers or wait for help adds to that stress. Volunteers here say they know they're helping reduce that stress. People are grateful that they're getting support, first of all, because they've waited a few days since they've been evacuated. Acknowledging the strain on the system this wildfire season, Premier Evie today said lessons have been learned and told CFAX 1070 a year-round approach might be coming. The possibility of keeping a permanent emergency response team up just like we keep the wildfire service up uh, year round now just given the scope and the number of emergencies we've seen in the province mostly linked with climate change an idea that was well received by the minister of emergency preparedness the burden on these communities and on the people of british columbia is growing exponentially in the heat of this crisis lessening the burden of those forced from their homes in bc's interior is taking place on the south island by a team of 17 volunteers Robert Buffum, CTV News, Saanich.
At least 12 people evacuated from Kelowna are deaf. An advocacy group says it's concerned about the absence of sign language interpretation for government announcements about the wildfires. One evacuee we spoke to who is deaf agrees. I mean, a lack of communication, especially difficult for deaf people. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's been no captioning, no interpreter on, on screen like there should be. Uh, there was during COVID. The Canada Deaf Grassroots Movement says it's extremely concerned about what it calls this glaring omission. Thousands of Yellowknife residents are anxious to return home, but the mayor says not yet. NWT Fire still deems the, the fire to be uh, a threat to Yellowknife, so it's not safe to return. What I can say, though, is that you know staff are already working on the plans for, for reopening. That plan is focusing on fire safety and ensuring essential services are up and running. A wildfire is still about 15 kilometers from the capital. Crews are evaluating how much work it will take to eliminate the threat. Wildfires are also burning close to Fort Smith and Hay River. A fire on commercial drive.